OK, guys, right, you should all hopefully have rulers and bits of paper on the desks at the end of your tables, the road. If you can try and pass them along, one of my pet annoyances is accuracy. So I'm going to get you to draw something. It's not very difficult, don't panic. The first challenge is obviously getting the plastic off the ruler. Thank you, sir. Oh. Right, okay, so you've got a bit of paper, hopefully, or most of you have. Can you draw me a six centimetre by eight centimetre rectangle? That's all it is. Sorry, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> right, once you've done your rectangle, the idea being is that you then pass it to your neighbour, you then draw a diagonal and measure that diagonal. And it's just as and your neighbour would then grade how well you've done. Now obviously six by eight, I'm hoping most of you have realised that your diagonal should be ten centimetres. Okay, so this is just a test of accuracy, really. The other thing you can bring into it, you can, if it's for lower level, you can use squared paper. It's really low level, because some of them still can't draw on lines with squared paper. Some of them can't do right angles, for example. The other thing it brings in I like as well is the fact that I'm sure most of you probably did your rectangle possibly like that, like that. Although some of you hopefully maybe drew it in the corner to use the right angle of the corner. Thank you, I'm hoping some of you did. Lovely. Okay. Oh, it was a rectangle there. <coughs> You're right, I might not have done it. But I did try. Yeah, she you not allowed to do that The other thing, obviously, you can then bring in Pythagoras, why it's 10 and that sort of thing. But just generally, I just have a bugbear about accuracy. So you're grading each other on how accurate you've drawn it. And obviously you can be particularly accurate. If it's 10.1, that's not enough. It's got to be 10 centimetres. But that's basically it. I have uh, I have a bug bay for accuracy. And that's my thing. Okay, thank you. Good. Talk to you a little bit about um, enabling EAL students to access the appropriate part of the maths curriculum. I've got those pens there. That's just to remind me how many points I've got to make. Right. Um, right. One, the, we get a lot of uh, EAL students uh, coming our way. Um, how we cope with them? Is that the right word? No. How we enable them to uh, get to the right part of the maths curriculum it can be a bit of a headache. It, uh, all of these students uh, initially come through the support department and uh, are assessed for their uh, ability to speak and write and read English and their ability to uh, cope with mathematics. Now, it was up until recently that they would do a test like that, which you might have seen before, which is meant to cover levels sort of four, five, and six, something like that. But it's, we were finding that people were struggling with reading it and were getting bored with it because, you know, they get sort of part way through and then give up on it. And look, they are to browse the thing. So, what uh, we then decided to do was to, to rewrite that test paper uh, to make, pe make it easier for people to understand what was being asked of them. Okay, so there's very little, I'm not going to pass those across, there's very little um, reading for people to do, it's mainly just understanding the mathematical symbols itself. Okay, and so that covers levels three up to six, and so that may have to look. Um, because what we've found is happening is that it's all too easy to 
assess someone and their, their test level comes out at say level two or something and so they think, oh goodness no, put them in the bottom set. Um, but it's actually the wrong place to put them. They were only getting level two or whatever because they couldn't actually access the test. So the idea is to try and make the test a bit more so that they can understand it and so you can get a better view of what they're able to do. And people are also being put in bottom sets simply because they couldn't speak any English and so on. But now that uh, we use this test, we're actually uh, even other subject areas um, are now using this, the results of this to uh, get a better idea of where they should actually be placing people. So in other words, not the bottom set, but move them forward a bit. Okay. So that first thing then is it's essential to get uh, your students actually placed, as far as you can tell, in the right group. Don't just dismiss them as being unable to do anything. Um, then when you've got them in the classroom and you communicate with them, well, I think the quick ones amongst you will realise what that topic is, won't you? All right, that's a bit of help. What topic are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you should know, you're Bob. <laughs> what topic are we talking about? Okay, it's a bit more help for you. I wasn't going to tell you, I can't put them on the sandwiches, can I? What am I talking about? You can't figure that out. Yeah. We can go further. I forget how many languages there are now. I think there's about eight on there, including, of course, English. And that's what I've got in one class. Okay. Um, so, key words, we try and sometimes put them in their, their own languages is also a helpful way of enabling them to recognise what it is that you're actually dealing with. But often, you know, if you actually put those words up, you find that they know a lot more than you thought. Something else. I'm going to take that here. Okay, what are we talking about now? It's probability, isn't it? Um, anyone recognise the language? Hiya. Oh, yeah. I think it's Polish, isn't it? I think, yes. It's, right, so um, what I do with this, I've actually got several of these in, in the classroom. I have them up on the wall, and you can then have items on paper and invite people to put them. Yeah. You're going to throw a thing at me? Yeah, in ten seconds. <laughs> All right, okay, right, okay, I'm ready to catch you, I'm good with dogs. Okay. <laughs> Two, two, one. Also, I'll leave you. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Something else, also, is working like that, as you may have seen before. Um, which also gives people some key words that they can use, they can look out for. And Liz was also going to talk about. Oh, okay. As well as having the book in the different languages that we use in this school, I've taken the, made a template so that students whose language we don't cover already can build up their own language booklet for maths. And what I've also done with the students, I've given them a little um, notebook to make their own personal bilingual dictionary of words that they come across within the maths lesson as we go along, so you can see the students, we've got English words on one side, and we've got the Bulgarian translation, and I'm using Google Translate in the classroom to help the students to find the translation that they need to be able to access the work in the lesson. So you can see their personal dictionary sort of builds up over a period of time as they're going through the different topics. Um, that's my bit to add to this. Oh, ten seconds, see, you just gave the dog's doom. Oh, that's good. Mo? Yeah, it's already for you. Okay. Okay. Well, up. Time for a bit of a My name's um, Mo Larek, and I'm at Tom's Deacon Academy. And I'm just going to show you um, my take or my new take on show me boards. And this has been my thing recently that I've been quite into. Um, <clears throat> Rather than using regular show me boards, I'm slipping stuff into plastic wallets and, and having a template for the students to work on. 
And um, one of the things that I really like uh, about doing this is I can make it match things that I have on the board. So, for example, um, in the A5 one, um, hopefully you'll be able to find um, this particular um, activity here. Um, and this is literally about finding um, sort of the radius or the diameter or the sort of an area of circle. So, your questioning um, could start off with um, this is the radius of the circle. Um, copy that down onto your mini board using your uh, marker pens. In my haste, I forgot to get you the um, marker pen. I'm sorry about that. Um, and they could fill in everything else on, onto the board. So um, you know, they, they, they can show you your, their, their solution for this, um, and then you can um, go through and you can check what their answers are. Um, now, the nice thing about this is that as you go through this activity, you can, um, from the feedback of the students, you can decide where you're going to take it. So I started off by giving the radius. I could have started off by giving them the diameter and they could work out everything else. Um, or I could have started off by giving them the circumference and then they could work out the value of everything else. So it's about them being able to kind of make links with, with what's going on, um, on on the different elements of, of the page. Um, and what I've done is um, I've created a, a few of these types of things. Um, if you look at the A4 sheet, um, there's one on sequences. And again, um, I can. they've got something in front of them that looks like what I've got on the board. And I can um, decide which bits of information I've given them. So I could maybe give them the sequence. Um, and then they could work out what the end term is and, and, and the other components of it. Or um, I could say, right, I'm going to give you the second and the sixth term of this sequence, and you want to see if you can fit in everything else. And again, they could work out what the end term is. Or I could have started with the end term, or, or been really harsh and, and started with the um, tenth term and the fiftieth term. And, and again, you're you're in charge and you're taking feedback from the students, and. Um, and then you're making decisions about where you're going to take the activity based on based on what you get from them. Um, I've created a few of these types of things. Um, it, it can be used in, in lots of different areas of math. And um, this is another one of my favourite ones, actually. So on the A5 sheet, um, they've got a table. Um, and they have to match this big pie chart with one of the pie charts down there. So um, I might say to them, I want you to match, um, this, make this pie chart look like pie chart C. And then they're filling in the table with, with the values that they think. And then the discussion's there about, you know, what if I wanted the total to be 12, what's everything else going to be? Or what if black was 6, what, what's everything else going to be? Oh, sorry, blue was 6, what's everything else going to be? Um, and you can even take this into algebra, so you can start saying, well, you know, for, for this one here, if I said to you green was A, would you be able to tell me what blue and, and red and black are going to be? So there's, there's lots of different places that you can take these things. Um, what I've done, for those of you who are on the um, PNMT shared area, um, under other resources, <coughs> on the area, and if you go to the PNMT area, under other resources, um, there's, there's a separate folder called Show Me Boards, and I've put lots of things, including the templates for these, um, into there. So you can, you can hopefully, uh, I'll wait to give you something that you can pick up and use tomorrow or, or, or the next day. Um, those of you who are on PNNT, I'm, I'm going to give it a go by tweeting it onto the board in a bit. Um, but it's fitly forward slash um, Show Me Board, and you'll be able to go straight there, and, and you'll be able to pick it up there as well. Have I gone over? No, it's not buzzed yet. Okay, well, I'm, I'm over now. <laughs> <laughs>